exactly where you want to be. On the water with your best friend. You two out there just casting and catching. Out on the water is a great place to make memories that'll last. But uh, we can't help it if your kid's a better fisherman. Visit Freedom Marine Center, Highway 431 in Albertville, and freedommarinecenter.net. Take it from me. When it came to my dreams, I knew that being hands-on would take me places college never could. Take it from me. When it came to my career, I was floating from job to job, never finding my calling. Take it from me. When it comes to what's next, joining the trades will take you further than you ever thought. Take it from us and find your future at GoBuildAL.com. Be more. Go Build. Take it from me. When it came to my dreams, I knew that being hands-on would take me places college never could, and joining the trades took me further than I ever thought. Find your future at GoBuildAL.com. Be hands-on. Go Build. When considering Maslow's hierarchy of needs, one must first figure the basic level of Essentially what Maslow was saying is that uh, from the basic level, what are we doing here? Look at that beauty right there. Shelter in. Warp. Oh! Yeah. It's getting loud for that fish right there. Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Aaron Martins, 2013 and 2015 Bassmaster Angler of the Year. What else do these guys have in common? Phoenix Boats. The last three Bassmaster Angler of the Year titles were won out of Phoenix Boats. Coincidence? We think not. Phoenix Boats. Our passion for fishing is obvious. Good evening. We're excited to kick off our 2023 spring season with our pre-tournament meeting for Lake Jordan. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, open up uh, with a prayer and then get into some of the information for the coaches and boat captains. So if you will take a second, bow with me. And we'll open the word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day and for all your many blessings, Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity that we have once again uh, to uh, go out this spring uh, and be with these coaches and these anglers and boat captains uh, as we get to enjoy your creation out on the water together, Lord. We ask as we begin this season that 
you will keep everyone safe as we travel around the state to and from tournaments and keep each of our anglers and boat captains safe on the water, Lord. We thank you for the opportunities that you give us, and just thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to be on Lake Jordan uh, this weekend, uh, home uh, in Elmore County. Uh, I want to thank Lisa Van Wagner uh, for working with us over the last several months getting ready for this tournament. Uh, she works with the Elmore County Economic Development. Uh, they are sponsoring this event and been great to work with as far as coordinating uh, what we need to put this tournament on. So we appreciate the uh, cooperation that we've had with them. Uh, they did ask me to make two announcements to all of our coaches and boat captains. Uh, first, um, if you're not aware, um, Lake Jordan and Elmore County were, was hit uh, with some of the tornadoes that we had several weeks back. Uh, and so their EMA directors asked us to make sure that our captains are aware that there is a little bit of debris, uh, especially on the tightest side of the lake, up in some of the sloughs uh, that hasn't got you know, pulled uh, with the, the water. Uh, so be mindful of that as you're going back into uh, some of those sloughs. And then the second thing we'll cover when we get uh, toward the end as well on the way in is uh, we're gonna where we're gonna be weighing in at. They've asked that we keep vehicles off the grass there. Uh, it's fine to walk on the grass, but not to be uh, pulling boats, trailers, uh, vehicles up on the grass. So uh, that's the two things that they've asked us to go over. And again, just want to tell them that we appreciate their uh, cooperation in getting this um, kicked off this weekend. Um, if you got questions about this tournament this weekend, um, through, as we go throughout the presentation, two different options that you can get your questions to us, and we'll go ahead and answer them live before we wrap up uh, this meeting. The first one is if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can comment on uh, that live feed. And when we get to the very end where we're addressing questions, We'll go back through those comments and answer any questions that you have uh, about the tournament. Uh, second option is you can text the ASA VFA cell phone number. It's 334-300-4437. Either way, you can get us those questions. We'll be glad to answer those live. Uh, or, of course, uh, if it's after the video, we'll be glad to answer those anytime this week. Um, of course, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on these and get to the information that you're wanting to know about this weekend, uh, but without our sponsors, what we do each weekend that we have a tournament is absolutely impossible to go through. So a lot of our sponsors are back with us again. Um, the Phoenix Boats, Freedom Marine, Alabama Power, Go Build, uh, Shimano, Coosa Cotton Frog Togs, um, Big Bite Baits, Browns, Amphibia, some of the ones that we've talked a lot about over the years. Um, and we'll be giving you some different information from them at the tournaments. Uh, we appreciate their continued support. We do have a few new ones that are on with us. Uh, Halo Rods is going to be, and Halo Fishing is going to be our uh, rod sponsor this year. we got some exciting things to announce about them that we're going to be talking about at our tournament this weekend. Um, and then with Tumka Marine Electronics, they've been with us uh, in some passion, um, some form in the past, but we're going to be talking in just a little bit about an opportunity that they have for you boat captains this year and an opportunity to equip your boat with some new electronics. So we appreciate them stepping up uh, for any of your electronic needs. Make sure that you check out um, the um, guys at Wetumpka Marine Electronics and give them a, a opportunity to equip your boat with what you need. Um, and then a new one that we've got with us this year is Electronic Fishermen. You know, you'll be seeing them at our tournaments and we're hearing a lot about those. We had a video at the beginning of this video uh, that we're doing live that you could see some of the things they do, uh, but their primary focus is on the water training, especially if you have Hummingbird Electronics, um, they will actually uh, have interactive guides and will actually do on the water training with you to make sure that you're using uh, your electronics uh, efficiently and as effectively as they can be used. So getting into uh, some of the specifics, uh, I want to give you some important dates uh, throughout this spring. Several of you have been asking about these. Uh, the first one is our tournament registration. We had several teams that were a little late this week uh, please do your best to make sure that your registration is due and turned in the Saturday before the tournament. Uh, that allows our 
directors and um, data personnel uh, an opportunity to uh, go in and be building everything that we need for the weigh-in. Um, it gives us about a week to do that. So make sure that those are, are turned in on time. Uh, the next three dates are scholarship that's been asking. Our scholarship application is not live yet, uh, but we're getting close to having it finished. It will be on the website on March the 1st. So any of your seniors and your teams, they will be able to access that March the 1st from our website. Those will be due uh, um, a month later on April the 1st, be turned in. We'll go ahead and get those judged and we will make an announcement on May the 1st on our scholarship winners. We'll do this um, that way that we have uh, opportunities in order to uh, allow these anglers to be rewarded at their senior awards day because they will already know the results of the scholarship application. Uh, live stream uh, is gonna be very similar to in the past, uh, but one small change. Um, we will be on Facebook Live for both our captain's meeting and on the way in both juniors and senior division uh, but we're also going to be live on youtube as well um, so for any of your uh, family members or people that's interested that doesn't have a facebook account they can go to our website there's a link on the home page to our youtube channel and they will be able to watch uh, captain meetings uh, any of the weigh-ins live through youtube uh, that way as well so Anybody that can't make it this weekend is interested in looking and watching the weigh-in. Um, this is the best way for them to be able uh, to do that. All right. So just talk about the opportunity that we uh, I mentioned earlier from with Tumpkin Marine Electronics. Uh, so this year they're going to step up and they're going to be giving away a low rants unit, an active target transducer. Uh, that's going to be about a $3,500 value. So um, this is going to go away to uh, someone that we sell a ticket to. Uh, we're going to draw for this at our classic tournament in June. So on the very last day of our classic tournament, um, we will do this drawing and we will announce who has won uh, the low rents unit and that transducer from Otonka Marine Electronics. We have them install it if you would like, $3,500 value. Tickets are only $10 in order to win that. So any of you uh, captains that are or, uh, maybe even anglers that have your own boat or looking to get your own that wants an opportunity to have a $3,500 electronic setup uh, for possibly as little as $10, you have the opportunity to buy these tickets. Um, what we're going to do is allow each school to sell tickets uh, so that you have a opportunity for individuals, boat captains, anglers, uh, anybody can buy tickets all over the state. Um, so what we're going to do on each of our uh, Friday night packet pickups, those teams that are fishing this weekend, you'll get your packet, you pick up your boat numbers on Friday night. There will be raffle tickets that will give your team. Any raffle ticket that you sell, uh, your team gets to keep $5 of that ticket uh, so it's kind of like a can function as a small fundraiser for your team as well. So, for example, if your school uh, picks up their packet, there's 100 raffle tickets in there and you sell all 100 raffle tickets, um, then you'll bring that bag back to us. Um, 100 raffle tickets, $10 a piece, that's $1,000. You bring all of that back to us. We'll take the raffle tickets to put it into the drawing and give you $500 out of um, that. So th that way, uh, we as an association uh, will be able to use some of it to go to the scholarship fund. You as a school can raise some money as well and have an opportunity to um, win that uh, electronic setup. Okay, so if you got any questions on that, we'll be glad to announce um, or answer any questions, and we'll be announcing this throughout the tournaments. We will have an opportunity for you to buy um, some of the raffle tickets at the tournament weigh-ins as well. But the easiest way will be for uh, your teams to, to sell them and have access to them uh, that way. All right, the next thing that we're going to look at is uh, just a few things that was different this year from previous years to make sure that you're all aware. Uh, the first one is the classification breakdown. So this is for our senior division only. Our junior division will still be in the uh, all in the same classification all juniors are together our senior division though is going to be broken up this year 
based off of your team size rather than your school. Um, so each team had the opportunity to uh, choose when you signed up and did your lake selections, whether your team was going to be fishing in the smallmouth classification or the largemouth classification. So the smallmouth, just so that you're all aware, um, you have to have at least two boats to fish in that classification, but you can't bring any more than four. And you're not allowed to swap classifications uh, throughout the year. Those classifications are set. Um, on the smallmouth classific uh, classification, your top two boats will count as your team score. On the largemouth, um, you can bring up to six boats and your top three will count for your team score. Um, when we're doing our awards at the end of the tournament, for the senior division, we'll still be recognizing the top 15 boats, uh, and that will be from both the divisions. They'll be, or classifications, they'll be fishing at the same time for the top 15. But when we give out our team awards, we will give out our top five teams from the largemouth classification and the top five teams in the smallmouth classification. So just so that you're aware of how uh, that will work. Um, some other things we changed this year as well. Um, so there are seven qualifying tournaments and still six. We added an extra one in there and allowed your teams to select your top four to fish. Uh, so we just want to make sure as we begin this spring that everyone is aware um, that when we get ready to send out who qualified for the Classic, we will be using only your three highest scores. Um, so if something happens and you can't fish that fourth tournament, or if you have a tournament that's really bad, uh, we will drop that tournament, use your best three, and then determine who qualifies for the Classic. Um, when we get ready to award the Team of the Year at the end of our Classic tournament, um, the way that we will do that is taking your three highest qualifying tournaments and your Classic tournament points, and that will determine our Team of the Year. So little bit of changes that just really our biggest thing is we wanted to give you an opportunity to drop your uh, worst tournament. All right, this is going to be one of the uh, biggest changes that we have this spring. And I'm going to let Mike jump in here once we kind of go through these. Um, so in the years past, we have had, um, you know, our biggest violations that we've had to worry about and try to enforce is on blast off, mainly with life jackets over and over and over. Uh, issues with life jackets and what we what was running into is that some lakes we did not have enough room to keep everyone pulled over where it actually became more dangerous to have boats pulled off to the side and then try to get them blasted back off. So we looked at a way that we can still ensure that um, there's violations if you're uh, or penalties if you're violating safety issues and blast off but doing it to where we don't create an additional safety uh, problem. So this year on our blast offs, um, if you violate one of the blast off conditions that Mike can go through in a little bit, uh, then your penalty will be by an early weigh in. So if you come through and you don't have your life jacket fastened or someone on your boat doesn't, if you're a senior boat, then as soon as you get that issue fixed, you can go ahead and blast off. So it may take you five minutes to zip it, fasten it, and then you can pull off, but you're going to have to weigh in 30 minutes earlier than your weigh-in time. Okay, so your penalty will be enforced at the weigh-in, not at the blast-off. Uh, juniors, because it's a smaller a group, will be a 15-minute penalty. Okay, so you can go ahead and leave. Once the tournament director has verified that your violation is fixed, giving you your new weigh-in time, then you can go ahead and blast off. Um, and then he's going to talk a little bit about being late as well. So, Mike, if you want to hop in and run from here on uh, these, and then we'll go through the other rules as well. All right, thank you, Josh. Welcome, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'll be standing at the end of the dock with a clipboard, so if you have a violation that uh, that, that you get pulled over for, uh, once, I, once I say that it is fixed and you're ready to go, I'll give you your new weigh-in time and send you on off. Uh, coming in late, We've had a bunch of folks here lately on these last few tournaments we had coming in late or not turning the peg back in to say that you're off the water. If you come in late, it's a pound per minute up to 15 minutes. After that 15 minutes you're, that you're late, 
your boat will be a zero and you will not be able to weigh no fish in. So anything over 15 minutes late, you're, automa you're automatically zero weighing no fish in. So make sure you get there on time. Our ladies, you know, stamp you when you come in and turn that peg in. They'll, you know, they let me know that you're, that you're in and what time you come in. So everybody's got a checkpoint. So make sure you get, our ladies will be like they were last year in the yellow fluorescent colors. So find them, make sure they're, the, you know, that you turn your pegs back in on time. All right, Josh. Thing switched over here so we can see what we got going on. Standard rules, as always, same as last year. Nothing, don't think it's nothing's changed on there. No inflatable life jackets. That's for the anglers and the boat captains. And that includes the hybrids. So make sure you got a old fashioned life jacket on. And it's got to be manufactured however it is, whether it's got buckles zippers fasteners they all got to be done top to bottom uh both uh, lights got to be on even though if it's, if it's daylight lights got to be on coming through blast off so we make sure everybody's lights are running kill switch hook to the boat captain live wells open and running there's a lot of times they'll come through and they won't even be running so make sure they're running so we make sure in these hot days that you got a good live well so uh, and everyone stays seated coming through the blast off. We've had a few kind of want to stand up and catch the pig. So just Curtis, he's a good old pitcher. So he'll he'll make sure he gets it out there to you. Uh, always keep your hands inside the boat. The blast off. Go ahead, Josh. And Catherine's the only thing you can help with is the trolling motor culling. And we will let you net this year on the boat, Captain. So nothing else. All you got to do is sit there and look pretty and Get you a tan. <laughs> and we're in slow mo on the switching over. Tournament specs packet packet pickup. All right, we got the packet pickup will be the same place that you will come for a weigh in. Uh, that that address is twelve twenty. Hopewell Road in Wapatomka. That is at the Wapatomka Sportsplex. Uh, that way you can kind of see where your weigh-in is going to be, how to get in the parking lot. And we'll have a map here in a few minutes so you can see where everything is. Uh, uh, bring your city data collection. They sh you should have got a, uh, a sheet mailed to your boat. Uh, I guess the coaches have got them. So make sure them packages are filled out and returned and uh, we'll be doing the packet pickup between 5 30 and 6 so try to get there before 6 so we can get out of there too and go eat everybody wants to go eat so make sure you get there early we'll try to get there a little early if you need to so looks like we got uh on our overall seniors we got 123 boats and junior division you're at 42 boats go ahead josh and Looks like on this lake right now, we have a total of 165 boats, as long as none of y'all going to drop out on us. So y'all stay in this tournament, and we'll have 165 boats and have us a nice, good tournament here. Right before this uh, flips, Mike, um, two things we'll show you on the map when uh, this comes up. The address that's on there, the 1220 Hopeful Road, that is to the back entrance of the sports complex. Uh, we're going to go through these on maps in a second. Uh, but that's where we're going to be at uh, for the packet pickups. If you come in on the front side, you just got to drive all the way around to the back, or you can use this address. Um, that city uh, data collection sheet, I emailed that to all of you captains and coaches um, this morning. Uh, please fill that out for us, and just whoever comes to pick up your packet, turn that in for your team. Um, that is the way that the cities and, and counties that sponsor our tournaments uh, look at the economic impact that our tournaments have to see their return on investment. Uh, and the more that we get of those back makes it easier for us to uh, lobby for tournaments in certain locations uh, upcoming years. So if you will, please help us out with that uh, when you come to the packet pickup. All right, Mike.
All right, tournament info on the blast off. Blast off at Bonner's Point. Uh, you can use the state ramp. Just make sure you get make your way over to Bonner's ramp for the blast off. Uh, Bonner's ramp will close. We will shut that ramp down during blast off. So if you're there late and we don't shut the ramp off, you'll have to wait until everybody gets blasted off before you can get in the water. Uh, arrive early so you can get you know get everything set and get in the water and you'll see some of the maps here where we want you staged that you know just go ahead and do common sense and get lined up according to your numbers and don't you know i don't need boat 100 up at the front or you need to be at the back uh try to avoid the blast off penalties and see if we can make it through this first tournament without any penalties we, we did good at state so we just need to keep it going and uh See if we can go. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, and, uh, he's already already mentioned the debris and the and the from the tornado damage a week ago. So y'all be real close and careful on the uh, storm damage. Make sure you don't run over nothing big out there and cause a big accident there. All right. Looks like we got a map showing right there how to get into the. Boat ramp is common sense there, you know, everybody get like, you know, don't wait till you get to the, the boat ramp to get your kids in there. Get there early, get them on, get them on in there. You can see how it's staged. Your boats need to be staged one through 50 up toward the front. Uh, boats 51 through 100 and anything after 100 and all, juniors need to be all the way back in the cold. As far back as you can go, juniors division. So I don't need no juniors up toward the front. And that line across there kind of keeps them back so you come at an angle to the to the boat docks there because you don't need you coming straight on and then trying to make a turn that, you know, to us there. Go ahead, Josh. You can see the parking lot up there. Got a big parking lot. We're going to sweep you around, make sure you get parked good. I think the next one shows parking a little bit better on it. There we go. You got the yellow airs going to the boat ramp. You know, well, of course, we'll have our guys there to help you get down in the thing and unhook your boats and uh, check in point. You see your check in point right there is the same place you're going to pick your pegs up. Uh, you return and pick up pegs at the same spot. So Curtis will be throwing them out. My ladies will be out there at the end picking them back up in the evening. So y'all be nice to them out there. All right, Josh. I think you got the next ones there. Or do we got rules? You can go ahead. It's the weigh-in address. Okay. Weigh-in address. I'll get her flipped up there so I can see. All right. There we go. Weigh-in. Tumker Sports Black for the boats. You know, we got two different two different addresses, y'all. So y'all make sure y'all write these down. For the boats only, 1220. Uh, Hopeful Road and what Tomka, that's for your boats coming in. If you're a spectator, you have to come in on 2350 Coosa River Parkway. That's coming in the front side of the sports plate. And then you can make a right and come over by the softball fields and the football field. Walk around to weigh in. Because uh, this is a trade to weigh in. So follow directions on the map. Because if you get lost and you say, I got lost and you're late. That's that's on you, not on us. Uh, fish care. Make sure you make sure you got plenty of water in your live whales. You know it's a good little, nice little haul getting to the to the sports flakes. But as long as you got plenty of water in there, and I don't think it's going to be real hot. So I think we should be good on them. Uh, boat captains, if you want to watch weigh in, make sure you got somebody there to move your boat and trade it around because once you drop them off. We're going to have a police officer standing there to make you going around. You can't hold up traffic while you're watching people weigh in. So it, it might be 10, 15 minutes before they get to the stage. So go ahead and park, come on back down, or get somebody to move your vehicle around so you can watch weigh in. All right, Josh. 
All right, before I flip to this next slide, uh, these two addresses are probably two of the most important things that we are gonna cover tonight. We're fixing to show you some maps so you can see what we're talking about. To make this weigh-in flow uh, effectively, we really need to make sure on boats, uh, those of you that are coming in with your, your boats to weigh in, you have to use that 1220 address. Uh, if you come in the other way, you're gonna be having to tote your fish a very long ways Whereas if you come in this way, we're going to have it where you can pull right up to the tanks. Okay, so please use that address. Anyone else, though, needs to use the other address. That back parking lot is going to be for boat parking and drop off only. Um, so all of your parents, uh, anybody that does not have a boat hook behind them needs to use that 2350 Coosa River Parkway address. Um, I know trailer weigh-ins sometimes are not the, the most ideal. Um, but on, on this tournament, um, either Bonners nor the state ramp, neither one are large enough for us to hold all of our boats and all of our spectators. So we do have a very nice city complex. We've used it a couple of years ago, but they've made a lot of improvements since then. We've got a, a massive uh, paved parking area for boats and trailers. We won't have to be out in the field. Um, and so we can make it, it work. Uh, I'll show you on the maps what he was talking about with captains. Now when we get to you on how you will have to have someone if you want to be able to watch it. So as this map clears up a little bit, this is an aerial shot of the Wetumpka Sports Complex. Uh, so if you can see on the highway on the top right hand corner where it says spectator entrance, if you uh, use that 2350 address, you're gonna it's gonna bring you to this entrance and you're gonna be able to come all the way down that little windy road to the roundabout. When you get to the roundabout, you're gonna take a right-hand turn and you're going to loop to the top of the baseball fields, back up very close to where it says spectator entrance at. And you can see the dark black pavement and asphalt where it's the newer paved area. You'll follow that small road on top of the baseball fields and then you will get into the massive parking lot where it says spectator parking. That's gonna be um, right there on one side of the football stadium, there's enough parking for every one of our spectators to get right there. Uh, and that way you will only have just a short walk to the other side of the football stadium for the way in. Um, so when you're bringing your um, you know, tents, food and all that, you might want to have a little wagon or you know, prep. Uh, it's not that far of a walk. A lot of our um, you know, ramps, but larger ramps, you've walked further than this because you can park right up next to the stadium. Um, the weigh-in will be held on a little stretch. It will be on concrete and pavement, so we don't have to worry about it being wet and soggy. Um, we're going to set it up where it says weigh-in right there. There's a horizontal stretch of concrete that's very wide. We can set up the weigh-in, have tents running all the way back down through there. <clears throat> the place that says boat entrance, that is the 1220 address. So you will be able to pull in that uh, paved road right there. And then we've got a massive parking lot for boat parking. <clears throat> that parking lot will hold every one of our boats for the junior and senior division tournament uh, if that's all that we have in there. I've got a couple of other maps that are closer up to kind of show you what this is going to look like. Um, so spectators and um, you know, parents, once they come in, they will park right here where it says spectator parking and they will have access to get to the way in by walking around either side of the stadium. Uh, it's pretty much paved all the way around. The maps aren't 100% updated uh, from the aerial shots, but they can park and then walk around either side of the stadium to get over to the way in area where the tents are gonna be. Um, all right, this is probably the most important one for you boat captains. Uh, and coaches that are watching, please make sure your captains understand this. Um, so when you come in on that 1220 address, you can follow the red lines and see how you're going to loop around. Um, so you're going to follow that all the way around. When you get to where it says angler drop off, that is going to be the back of our stage trailer. We're going to have our bump tank set up. Everything will be set up right there. They will literally be able to um, get out of the boat and take their fish right to the bump tank. So when they're in line, we will go ahead and be giving them our weigh-in bags. Okay, You will use our weigh-in bags. And so we will give you uh, a mesh bag and a water bag that you'll go ahead and be getting your fish out. When you get to that angler drop-off point, 
please go ahead and have your fish and water already in your weigh-in bag so that you can step off the boat and go right to the bump tank and start walking, working your way toward the stage. Okay, boat captains, if you want to watch your anglers weigh in, then somewhere once you pull in this parking lot before you get to the angler drop off, you need another boat captain or a parent to take your truck and park it for you. Okay, otherwise you can pull it up on Facebook. You can watch them weigh in that way. Understand that we want to, boat captains want to watch your anglers weigh in, um, but we've got to keep this traffic moving and so we don't back it up. Okay, uh, it's with our situation and our size and what we have, this is basic, best case scenario. Uh, so that's going to be a moving line. Okay, um, so go ahead and make those arrangements now so that we don't have to have a vehicle stopped. It's got to keep moving. So as soon as the anglers drop off, um, jump out, uh, the trucks will go ahead and move around all the way around back to where the arrow is pointing and that's where the first boat and trailer will park. Um, and then once the first boat and trailer is parked there, you'll see the line will be pretty easy to follow. We'll come all the way um, down that first row. Once it's full, we'll move to the second row, but we will have some workers out there uh, assisting you in this um, loop so that you can get through everything. Um, so before I, I turn this back over to Mike, hit a few more things. Uh, just to remind you, if you've got questions specific to this tournament, go ahead and drop them on Facebook in the comment section and or uh, text the ASA BFA phone number. As soon as uh, Mike finishes this next slide or two, um, I will answer as many questions as you have before we jump off. So this is a good opportunity if we need clarification on anything um, to make sure that you, um, you know, go ahead and mention that um, so we can get those answered. All right, I think my next thing is the uh, off limits that should be popping up. Yeah, off limits, I pretty much know what this one is. Off limits is anything that's posted on, on the lake. So if you, if you know anything that's off limits, please don't fish there. And Bonner's Point will be closed until 8 p.m. A.M., excuse me, A.M. <laughs> Uh, that morning, so we get everybody out of there before we used to swing back through there, and uh, and come back in. So the the, the point cove is like I said, it's off limits till eight a.m. And this this little reminder right here: stay fifty feet away from other anglers. We've had a lot of complaints. You know, that's just sportsmanship right there. I mean, if you see somebody fishing, don't come right up on top of them and start fishing right beside them. Stay a little distance away from them, a good 50 feet or, or more if you can. You know, if they're in your spot, they just got there faster than you did. You didn't have to wait till they move out of the way. So a little sportsmanship on this part. We can see if we can do, do a little bit better on, on this right here. 50 feet away from other anglers when you're fishing. I'll see if I can I'll get somebody out there this year to really watch that for us. Uh, they've been watching other things, and they ain't been paying no attention to the who's been fishing on top of each other. So we're going to get, we're going to get on that and see if we can get that, that rule right there taken care of on the sportsmanship. So a little sportsmanship on that and everybody do good. So let's just go out there and have fun and be safe y'all. All right. I'm going to get uh, started answering a few questions um, that we've had pop up. Um, again, if you've got any, go ahead and start dropping those now and I'll answer anything that we need to. Uh, we're looking forward to this weekend, though. Um, really uh, excited about kicking off another uh, spring season. Uh, we've got a, a several new teams with us that uh, we're excited about having some new sponsors that's going to be at some weigh-ins. Um, so um, one thing, uh, as a reminder, um, we are um, bigger than what either one of the ramps on this lake can hold. So not everyone is going to be able to use Bonners. Bonners has got probably around 100 or so spots uh, for boats and trailers that can be uh, parked there. And so some people are going to have to use uh, the state ramp. When you're coming to the city complex for weigh-in, I think it's only like a two to three minute difference for which ramp that you're coming to. Um, so you are feel free to use either one to uh, put in at, uh, but we will blast off from Bonners. So if you put in at the state ramp, you have to make it over to Bonners when we start the weigh-in or the blast off 
It's looking like, but around, I think Mike said between six and 6.15, we're going to be at Safe Light. And we would love this year to be able to go as soon as we hit Safe Light. So we're going to shut the ramp off if we have to. Go ahead and get blasted with those that are in line. Um, when you get your peg, you'll fish throughout the day. Your peg does not come back to the weigh-in trailer. Your peg must go to uh, where you got the peg at. So even if you put in at the state ramp, you're going to come back to Bonner's to check in. You're going to give the ladies at Bonner's Point your peg. <clears throat> they will record your time. And when they record your time, if you're leaving and going to the state ramp, they'll probably go ahead and record how many fish you have as well, something like that. So they'll write down, hey, boat number two was in at two o'clock. Uh, they had four fish. And then you can go on to the state ramp to load your boat up. Um, so if you leave Bonner's Point at two o'clock with four fish, then you shouldn't show up at the you know, the way in at 340 with five fish. Like that's the reason we, with two ramps, that's the way that we'll run that. Um, so you can check back in at Bonner's, then go to the state ramp and load up. Uh, if you're leaving, we'll record that down. Just make sure that you're there as quickly as possible um, so that we can get way in going. A um, couple other things that asked um, was about the packet pickup and the way in. Uh, those uh, addresses, you can go back and look at the video. Uh, there's two different ones. The 1220 address will be where the packet pickup location is at and where the boats will be parked during tournament. Those are the same address. Um, and then the spectators will use the 2350 address for um, the weigh-in. Um, all right. I think I've got most of them um, answered there. Um if there's anything else, we'll be glad to, to answer and making sure. Um, yes, so the check-in will be um, at Bonner's. We know if you're going to the state ramp that you've got to have a little bit of time, but by boat, you can get from Bonner's to the, the state ramp pretty quick. So, you know, it shouldn't be a 40-minute discrepancy. But, yes, we do realize that when you check in, that you've got to have a little time to get over there, wait in line, trailer your boat, and then get over to the uh, city complex. So. We do understand all of that. Um, unless you've got anything else, Mike, that's only um, questions that I've seen. Uh, if oh, anybody's yeah, got think, any I questions. Think need, I think, yeah, I think everybody needs to be in the water by 530, no later than 530. Uh, probably shut the ramp down around 6 and let Ashley start doing the national anthem. And shortly after that, it should be blast off time. So 530, no later to get in the water, no later than 530. And boat ramp will close at six. Okay, so after six o'clock, um, Bonner's Point's going to be shut off. We have to go uh, that ramp. We have to go across the ramp for the blast off. Um, so uh, make sure you're either there way early so you don't have to be the one of the boats that are, are stuck. Um, but once it's time to go, we're going to go ahead and, and go. And you'll have to put in once we get everyone blasted off. Uh, if you're coming from the state ramp, Try to be there the same time, 5.30, 5.45, so that we don't have boats trying to come in while we're doing the blast off uh, and stay up on that side away from the ramps so that we don't have any conflicts. Um, if anybody else got any other uh, questions that you think of, uh, we've given out the number for the ASA BFA phone. It's on our website as well. It's the 334-300-4437. Uh, you can text that number or shoot me an email. We'll answer any other questions you have this week. Uh, otherwise, we look forward to uh, seeing all of you at the packet pickup on Friday. We just need one representative from each team that comes to pick up those packets. Uh, when you pick up your packets, you'll get the raffle tickets for the um, Wetumpka Marine Electronics giveaway uh, as well. And then if you'll bring those data sheets from the city uh, that night, we'll get all of that exchanged so that we're ready to go Saturday morning. Uh, so I believe that's everything. We appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you this weekend. And uh, until then, stay safe. See y'all this weekend.
exactly where you want to be. On the water with your best friend. You two out there just casting and catching. Out on the water is a great place to make memories that'll last. But uh, we can't help it if your kid's a better fisherman. Visit Freedom Marine Center, Highway 431 in Albertville, and freedommarinecenter.net. Take it from me. When it came to my dreams, I knew that being hands-on would take me places college never could. Take it from me. When it came to my career, I was floating from job to job, never finding my calling. Take it from me. When it comes to what's next, joining the trades will take you further than you ever thought. Take it from us and find your future at GoBuildAL.com. Be more. Go Build. Take it from me. When it came to my dreams, I knew that being hands-on would take me places college never could, and joining the trades took me further than I ever thought. Find your future at GoBuildAL.com. Be hands-on. Go Build. When considering Maslow's hierarchy of needs, one must first figure the basic level of what Maslow was saying is that uh, from the basic level, what are we doing here? Look at that beauty right there. Shelter in. Warm. Oh! Yeah. It's getting loud for that fish right there. Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Aaron Martins, 2013 and 2015 Bassmaster Angler of the Year. What else do these guys have in common? Phoenix Boats. The last three Bassmaster Angler of the Year titles were won out of Phoenix Boats. Coincidence? We think not. Phoenix Boats. Our passion for fishing is obvious. Mm-hmm. <laughs>